So we're going to do our first engine job. But before we do that, we need to do a little homework. Before we dig in, we need to know exactly what we're up against. And this is a kind of a unique situation, and more or less the reason why I decided this would be a good series to do. Because I have never pulled an engine from an XJ, and I've never been inside of a 4.0. And I don't know what's wrong with the engine that's in there. So it's a, it puts me in the same position as somebody who's doing their first job. And I've, I'm covering all of the steps that I think that the, if before you start, before you dig in, you should cover too. So back in the old days, all we had was a service manual, what we could glean from talking to our friends, and seat of the pants, just dive in and go. Today, you've got some resources available to you that we didn't have back then, and I suggest that you use all of them, because I'm using all of them on this. So obviously, YouTube is your first thing, and because I've never pulled an engine from a Jeep, I was curious, okay, what exactly am I up against? And I came across a channel called Project Dan H. This guy, says he's a bit of a Jeep guru, does a lot of XJ stuff. And by watching several of his videos, I saw all of the things that I'm going to be up against when I go to pull this one out, including like pulling the header panel off and where hidden bolts are. By watching his videos, I found that there are a couple of goofy Torx fasteners at the top of the transmission, you know, engine to transmission bolts. Uh, I could glean the order in which things have to come apart. Now, another resource, which I'm going to use probably before the end of this day, is a junkyard. So my friend Steve Magnanti, he does a channel, a junkyard crawl channel, and one of the things he said that always stuck in my head was that a junkyard is more than just a place to get parts. A junkyard is also a classroom. So if you can go and find your make, your model, whatever it is that you're working on, and it's partially disassembled, the front end sheet metal is off, or the motor has been plucked out of it, you can get a pretty good idea of what you're going to be up against once you get in there. All of the stuff that you can't see when a vehicle is complete. And it'll help you build your plan. Because you need a plan. Before you just dive in, you need a plan. Having a place to work on it, that's important too. And we've, as old timers have all done, we've all got our war stories about engines that we built in apartment parking lots and, and gravel pits and We've all done it, right? It's terrible. It's, but don't do it unless you have to. You can rebuild an engine any place. Now look at what the Pakistanis do. They don't even wear shoes. They do it on the side of the road. But let's try to be as human about it as possible and try to be as professional about it as possible. Because this isn't like a des I hope this isn't a desperation move for you. I hope it's something that you, you're wanting to do just you know, to build your skills and, and fix your car and do it right. So a place to work is one thing, but you're also going to need some, what I consider to be essential tools to get the job done. And the time to gather these things is before you get started, because you don't want to start digging into an engine or digging into a job and find that, oh, I don't have this, I need this. And that's a perfect example of those Torx fasteners at the top of the transmission on these. If I didn't know about them, I would be halfway pulling this halfway pulling this out. I don't have those Torx sockets where the Torx wrenches. So I'd have to stop, and it's a delay. So by doing all of your homework ahead of time, gathering all of the information, all of the tools, and spe especially specialty tools that you're going to need to do the job ahead of time, is going to make life that much simpler. So let's go over and look at what we need for the basics. So this is another thing that will put you ahead of the game if it's at all possible. If you can pick up a core engine, one that you can build and then swap into your car. That's so why you're not down, you know, any longer than is absolutely necessary. And you've got extra parts, you know, spare parts. It's easier to build an engine and then just take yours out and swap it over. So that's what we're doing with this. But we're not ready to dig into this. Next, next installment, we'll actually start tearing into the engine. Let's talk about tools. So, obviously you're going to need a way to pull the engine out. So, if you're going to do this for any, if this is going to be your thing, you're going to do more than just one, invest in an engine waste. They're not that expensive. Two, three hundred bucks and you get yourself something that's workable. If you can get one 
that's got these retractable legs, you know, you can lift them up, you drop the boom, you stand the legs up. These things go in a corner. They're great. And if, if you got a couple of friends that are into it, chip in. And then, you know, you've got a community engine hoist. That's what we used to do when we were kids, when, we, when I was younger. You know, you have one engine hoist and three or four guys and they bounce around between them. So, engine stand. Now, engine stand is a great thing to have, and I really recommend you do it on an engine stand. You can do it on the floor. You can do it on a table. Bob Glidden, who's a legendary pro stock guy, pure genius. Bob Glidden never used engine stands. When he built his race engines, he would either do them on the ground or on a table. And his reasoning was that the engine is being supported by the engine stand, the back of it, and this is going to somehow distort the block. Because he understood the flexible nature of cast iron. So the perfectionist that he was, instead of bolting it to an engine stand, he let the engine stand free as its own casting and just rolled it around and did, manipulated it, did whatever he had to do to do whatever job had to be done. But we're not Bob Glidden. <laughs> we're just trying to get a nice, clean, efficient job done. So investing in an engine hoist, and they're cheap, Harbor Freight, $50, $75, get yourself a decent one. It's the best way to go. There are certain tools that are universal to any job that you're going to do with an engine. Obviously, you're going to need a torque wrench. You don't have to spend a lot of money. This is an ancient craftsman one. I've had this for at least 25 years. It serves me well. It works. I've checked it occasionally. You know, this supposedly they age and they're not accurate anymore. I've checked this against newer torque wrenches. I do it occasionally. Whenever I come across a newer torque wrench, I'll just... I'll compare them just to make sure. And this one's within five pounds of where it started out. So I just keep going with it. Measuring tools. As you go through the engine, there's many things that are going to have to be measured. Now, here's what's important to know about this particular job that we're doing. This is not going to be a hot rod engine. We're not really concerned with piston height and and we, we don't we don't really care about uh, the things that we're going to blueprinting or building a hot rod engine this is going to be just a straight rebuild now after when I've got this engine swapped into the truck and I have the old engine out I'm gonna do something with that we'll, we'll do something spicy with that but for the purposes of this this job this truck this everything this is going together dead stock. So we're not worried about all of the specialty tools you're going to need for blueprinting an engine and degreeing a cam and do it. No, this is just going to be a straight pull it apart, fix the problem, put it back together again proposition. But you still need to measure things. A cheap digital caliper you can get at Harbor Freight will do the job. The more you spend, the higher the quality of the piece you get, the more accurate it's going to be. But again, for the purposes of this, we're not really looking. We don't need that level of complete accuracy. Still, there are certain things that you're going to have to measure that are critical. That if they're off by just a hair, you're done. And we'll get into those things as we go deeper into the project. You're going to need a damper puller. They're cheap, $12, $15, Harbor Freight. You don't need anything. Don't need anything crazy, but just about every single engine you come, you're going to come across is going to have a damper that's pressed on and the damper needs to be pulled off. So get yourself that. You're going to need an assortment of cleaning things, brushes. I'll show you how I'm going to clean this. You don't need a pressure washer, you don't need anything crazy, just a garden hose and some oven cleaner will get the basic engine clean enough to start handling, start tearing it apart. Working clean and organized is paramount to getting a good job. You may not have the optimum situation to build an engine in. You could be doing it on a dirt floor garage. But the, making sure that the area around where you're working on the engine is uncluttered, that you've got some space that the actual surface that you're working on is clean. You can put down some sheets of plywood, whatever it happens to be. You just want to keep things 
you don't have to go surgical, you're not building Formula One engines, this isn't the Ferrari test labs. All you need to do is make sure that you can work clean and organized and stop as you go along. A lot of times you get into a job and you'll start, I mean, the, the gaps just start building up. And when you're doing work like this, when you get to that point that you're feeling dirty and things are disorganized and so on and so forth, stop. Clean yourself, clean the area around. Organize tools, organize parts. I cannot begin to tell you how important that is. A cluttered surroundings leads to a cluttered mind and a cluttered mind doesn't really focus on the things, the important things that you need to focus on when you're doing something like an engine. So super, super important. If you can work off of a table, you've got an engine stand, some kind of table, it doesn't have to be a stainless table like this, it could be a ping pong table, it doesn't make any difference. As long as you have a place where you can lay out your parts and your tools and we're clean and organized. Lots of paper towels, lots of hand cleaner, whatever solvents you're going to use for cleaning, have it all there as you're going along. So this way, th there's, there's no break in the action, right? So I think I covered pretty much everything I wanted to as far as gathering parts. Now in the comments, you guys who have been around the block, You've got suggestions as far as things that people should have on hand before they get started here, throw it in the comments. Uh, many different ways to skin the cat, many different ideas. So let's get as much of that as we can into the comments so guys that are follow along here can go through them and pick up things that may fit their situation better than what I'm laying out myself. So that's it for now. Next time around, we're going to give this thing a cleaning and we're going to start tearing it apart. And we'll go from there. See you tomorrow.